evil hiding in plain sight. I use this spell with all my might to stop your changing form and shape. This bank which seals your fate. Doesn't really rhyme, does it? So, uh, we love two-part episodes, right? Now how about shows where the second part comes three friggin' seasons after the first? Oh, we burned that spell three years ago, it doesn't exist anymore. It does in her mind. We previously looked at Wicca Envy, which was episode 10 of Charmed Season 1, and the one we'll be looking at now is Brain Drain, episode 7 of Season 4. And because it's a Season 4 episode taking place before Charmed and Dangerous, you know it has a strong chance of being in my top 20. Honey, it's us. It's your sisters. I don't have sisters. Taking place directly after A Night to Remember, which saw Paige moving into the manor at the end, Brain Drain focuses on Piper, whose new obligations, both as the older sister and lead witch, are taking their toll on her. Especially when demon stuff means she has to miss a friend's baby shower. It's almost like the last three or four years you've just kind of disappeared. Mm, yeah. The source has also been supernaturally bugging the manor, and sees a chance to strike, trapping Piper in an illusion where he tries to convince her that she's really just a mental patient, and her life as a witch is a delusion. There are no demons. They're just figments of your imagination. What does that have to do with Wicca Envy, you may ask? Well, remember that power relinquishment spell? Although the sisters burned it, the spell still exists in Piper's memory, and the source hopes to get her to say it to take control of the charmed powers himself. Vanish our powers. One last time. Now, I can remember back in the horror days of message boards and forums where the Charmed vs Buffy battle was at its ugliest, even though there were plenty of fans like me who were all like... Can we all just get along? But one major sticking point was that, the same year, both had an episode centred around one character being supernaturally convinced that they were really just a mental patient, and that someone who died the previous season was still alive in the other reality, as an attempt at swaying them. She is dead. No, she's not. We released her three months ago. There was even this fan rumour that Buffy's Normal Again was supposed to air first and got pushed back, meaning Charmed ripped them off again! To which I say, these are far from the only two shows to do an episode like this. This is crazy! Like, say, a clip show or a musical episode, the storylines to both are what we call a cuckoo nest plot. The inspiration can be traced all the way back to Greek mythology and the epic poem The Odyssey, in which Odysseus and his crew encounter an island of people who spend all day eating lotus flowers. These induce hallucinations that make everyone forget about their homes and serve as an obstacle to the heroics the protagonists are meant to do, with the rejection of the more pleasant illusion allowing for more adventures. The more specifically modern variant of the whole thing was just a mental patient's hallucination comes from a movie from 1920, so spoiler! The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And this kind of story has been happening so much that a film from 1962 was named The Cabinet of Caligari and posited as a remake when all the two had in common was the mental patient twist. Anyway. You're too late. Our nightmare's about to end. Brain Drain serves as an example of just why season 4 was charmed at its absolute peak. Fixed. Despite losing Prue and Shannon Doherty, the season took this not as a loss, but as an opportunity for new types of storytelling in the wake of what it would actually be like for you to lose your sister and be expected to keep fighting evil even when it continues to cost you so many things you care about. Maybe it's time for some other witches to take over and let us get on with our lives. What we gained was the chance for Holly Marie Combs to step into the lead role and get opportunities to really show off her skills most notably in Hell Hath No Fury, and like that episode, Brain Drain showcases just about everything that makes her so compelling as an actress. I think that was Paige's chair. Yeah, I know, it was ugly. Snarky one-liners, slapstick comedy, understated sadness, and raw emotion. What's the matter, honey? Why are you crying? <laughs> I can even remember my first watch of this episode and how it really made me appreciate her talent. Bottom line is, if I'm ever gonna have kids, then I need to have a life first, which means I need to be a human first and then a witch later, okay? Got it? Good. There's no big, intense scene like the one at Prue's grave, but it's a complete performance that takes us on a journey, and again reminds us what a crime it is that this lady never got a single Emmy nomination throughout the series. Actually, I've never been more serious in my life. The episode isn't really significant for any arc progression, aside from Cole giving a reason to keep the source out of action until Charmed and Dangerous, 
but we already discussed how important standalone episodes can actually be in terms of shaping the characters in a way that allows us to really care about the big stakes moments when they come along. In this case, as a Piper story, it does revisit a key part of her character that's been present ever since the first episode. In her deepest heart, she never wanted to be a witch. When the Charmed Powers were first awakened, Phoebe was ecstatic to be a witch, and although Prue was worried about what kinds of evil would be coming after them, she quickly warmed to the idea. The Book of Shadows said that our powers would grow. Grow to what? Piper, meanwhile, was always the most reluctant of the three. Even in the second episode, she was worrying about whether or not they might be evil. Are you kidding? It's a great thing. We don't know that. We don't know anything about these powers. In How to Make a Quilt Out of Americans, when their powers were stolen, she wasn't too cut up and would have been happy to retire then and there. You've had it. What do you mean you've had it? You've had it with what? With being a witch. In Once Upon a Time, after the elders stopped her and Leo from getting married, she went on strike and said she'd give up being a witch because of their mistreatment. I'm going to stand in this very spot until you send Leo back to me. And even in the season four premiere, the loss of Prue made her give it up outright. You can tell them we buried their precious charmed ones when we buried our sister. Each of those instances usually had circumstances force Piper to rely on her powers and grudgingly go back for the sake of the greater good rather than her choosing being a witch because it was what she wanted. With the most recent instance having her saying that finding Paige was more about simply not wanting her to be killed rather than reforming the power of three. I am only doing this to save her. I'm not remotely interested in reconstituting... So now, faced with another chance to give it all up, and this time not knowing what's at stake, she comes very close to. But there's a wonderfully ironic throughline in this episode that, while she was all about retiring after the baby shower incident, once she's in a situation where she needs her powers, her instincts kick in, and she's all about escaping. I gotta get you two out of here, maybe that'll break the spell. Like, in the illusion, she even sees a woman get mugged and is compelled to intervene and her reading the relinquishment spell is shown as something she very much doesn't want to do, and is only doing so because she's been so broken by someone who knows exactly what button to press. You can have this life, my <laughs> We can have it together. So the underlying theme reinforced by this episode about Piper's character is that she might long for a normal life and an end to the madness, but she can't turn her back on being a witch. No, I, I'm never going to stop wanting a normal life, but you know what, I think that's the one thing that actually keeps me sane. That'll come into play in Season 8, where the Charmed Ones and Leo are forced into assuming new identities in the hope that they'll be able to leave demon fighting behind, but again, Piper can't ignore innocents that need help. Are we sure we really want to do this? Positive. Absolutely. And considering that balancing your obligations with your hopes, dreams and everything else is something we all struggle with throughout life multiple times, the complaints of Piper always wanting more normality kind of ring hollow for me. For me, it's the problem. It's the cause. It's the problem with everything. This episode shows that what she wants isn't a normal life per se, but one where she isn't forced to put everything she cares about on hold. And she really does like being a witch deep down. And so that demon is gone? Thank God, because that guy was freaking me out. It makes for a surprisingly sweet ending when you see her happily running through the manor, appreciating everything she has, even knowing the drawbacks. Besides, it's actually kind of good to know that I'm not the only one who struggles with the idea of being a witch. And like in Hell Hath No Fury, it's cool to see Phoebe taking the reins when Piper is MIA. There's a bunch of summoning spells we can try, come on. Paige is very well utilised here as well, with her already stepping out of her role as the new one to contribute to the plot in her own way. But I am getting to know the source. He likes to play tricks in people's minds. I mean, God knows he did with mine. He almost had me kill a guy, remember? Again, Season 4 had this new character that had to learn everything Phoebe and Piper already know from scratch, but it isn't used to turn her into a load. Well, maybe that's what he's trying to do to Piper, get into her mind somehow. Rather, Paige is the one who can provide a different perspective that the others otherwise wouldn't have thought of. I mean, if that's where the spell is, then that's probably where he's looking for it. Paige is the one who gets the brainwave, Phoebe uses that to find a solution, and hey-ho, quality ensemble storytelling in a nutshell. And if he can get into her mind, then why can't we? So, back in the Wicker Envy video, I mentioned that Leo saved the Charmed Powers by healing the Book of Shadows before the sisters could give them to Rex. It's not too inconsistent with White Light of Law, since he goes ahead and heals the broken P3 sign in Size Matters, and uses his powers to fix a leaky sink in Saving Private Leo. The possibility of him healing the book isn't mentioned when they realise what the source is planning, but it makes sense in a way that just isn't spelled out. 
The Charmed Ones were nearly destroyed when Rex backed them into a corner, and he would have had their powers if they didn't have to go to the trouble of sealing them in a lantern and handing them over. The time in between giving them up and giving them to Rex allowed Leo to intervene. Here the source is right next to Piper the whole time, which is likely why he's performing the illusion spell himself instead of getting an underling to do it. So his plan means that he would be right there to take control of the powers as soon as Piper gave them up. Oh, and notice that in Phoebe's premonition showing this scenario, he only uses pages and pipers. What does he say in Charmed and Dangerous? Your power was always the weakest. Hardly worth taking. Outside of the deeper stuff, the Cuckoo Nest setting allows the main cast to have some fun playing alternate versions of themselves. You're driving me crazier than I already am. The top prize has to go to Rose McGowan, of course. Mm, well, he sure flew. Who knew she suited playing a snarky mental patient so efficiently? Got milk? Ooh, don't think so. It's a shame Daryl couldn't be thrown in there too. Maybe as a security guard in the hospital who got bribed to play along. Julian McMahon gets only one line and boy does he make it count. Can't hurt me. I'm the mighty Balthazar. And Alyssa. I had to grab my broom. For what? Well, for flying, silly. Why do you play with our hearts like this? Uh-oh. Now they're innocent to save. No, Phoebe, wait! Fun fact, I sent a picture of Phoebe's outfit for this episode to a friend who's never seen the show but does love wearing corsets, asking if she approved, and the answer was a resounding yes. <laughs> they all looked great in this episode, so I hope Ailish got treated to a nice cake or something. We also get some fun continuity nods, like the crayon-drawn Book of Shadows, which... Well, I believe it speaks for itself. You are nuts. So Brain Drain, like many season 4 episodes, is something that comes out of a well-oiled machine, where writers, actors and whoever clearly had a renewed vigour and delivered a solid mix of emotional roller coasters and good quality comfort watches. Did it ever occur to you that maybe this is none of your business? Oh, that's besides the point. Phoebe! I swear, even the standalone episodes of season 4 are of such high quality, it's practically criminal that the it went downhill when Prue left narrative still persists. Not, you want little kids? Not with demons dropping in all the time. I don't. TV? Hold that thought. It's fun enough to be more than just a typical demon of the week story, and challenging enough to make you care about the stakes. I mean, this is the first thing I think of when I picture Charmed at its best. <laughs> I've used the line, it's exactly what it needed to be before, so I guess it's time to recycle. What the hell happened? The freaking furniture just attacked! And since I've ragged on Phoebe's hair a bit too much in the past, let's all take some time to appreciate just how lovely it looks in this episode. What do you say we, uh, click our heels and get out of this crazy joint? Mm, no offense. That's okay. My life has always been a little crazy. 